the Samsung Gear S3. So far, this has been my favorite smartwatch that I've reviewed, that I've used, and that I've seen. So let's take a look at it now. Okay, so taking a further look or a closer look at the Samsung Gear S3 Frontier, the first thing you notice is the size of it. This is a fairly large watch. Um, I would say large compared to smart watches. If you compare this to a normal watch, to me, it's normal. It's about the size of a G-Shock or any other kind of sports watch. And it's a very premium looking watch. It's made out of stainless steel. So the build quality is second to none. I mean, it feels premium. If you get the uh, classic version, you'll get a leather band. And of course, this is the Frontier, so you'll get a rubber kind of soft it's fairly pliable very comfortable band i like it it matches the watch but uh, looking at the case it's about a, a half inch in depth i mean the exact dimensions is 1.81 by 1.93 but um, like i said it's stainless steel and there's your little optical heart rate sensor on the back it does have speakers as you can see right here on the left side and then it's got a microphone here on the right side there's your microphone it's got two physical buttons and then it's got of course the dial and it is a touch screen <clears throat> but looking at the touch screen it's a 1.3 inch super AMOLED display which allows it to remain on when the watch itself is actually um, asleep so the watch face will always be on of course right now I don't have it on my wrist is of course asking me for my passcode but like i said it's a 1.3 inch super amoled display it's got a <clears throat> one gigahertz dual core it's called a xeno 7270 processor so whatever that means of course this has got built-in gps it also has built-in wi-fi which is actually really convenient like i said it's a super amoled display uh, approximately 278 ppi according to samsung's website and like I said, it's 1.3 inches, so if you compare it to the Apple Watch or the Pebble, it does seem massive, but um, to me, it's the perfect size. I've got larger wrists, larger hands, so I absolutely love it. So far, I've had this watch for about four days, and i got to say I'm definitely in love with it. Out of all the smartwatches I've used or tested, this is by far the best. <clears throat> it's my favorite. Samsung advertises uh, three days of battery life. Now, obviously, it's going to depend on your usage. When I, with my testing, I use the screen always on, and I get about two full days or 48 hours of battery life, and that's using the screen always on. However, if you turn that feature off, then you're definitely going to get three days without an issue. And I get <clears throat> a fairly large amount of notifications and stuff, so I use it quite a bit. And like I mentioned, this is a touch screen. However, I find that just using the dial is more intuitive, and it's extremely snappy, as you can see. You can bounce back and forth between apps. And the side buttons, of course, if you got the top button, you push it once, that's your back button. Uh, the bottom button, you push that, that takes you home. And if you hold the top button, that'll open up Samsung Pay, which is by far one of my favorite features of this watch, is the ability to pay with your watch. I've tested it uh, three different places now, and it works flawlessly. The cashiers were all kind of baffled. But, and then, of course, um, like I said, you push the bottom button and that's going to bring you home so anytime you get lost in the interface you just push that bottom button and that will bring you back home and if you double tap the bottom button that will open up S Voice and S Voice works pretty well it's fairly accurate so I've tried texting with it and uh, dictating and it's been spot on you do have to hold it fairly close to your mouth though obviously so the microphone can pick it up and then when you're already home, if you push the bottom button, that's going to bring you to all your apps. And again, the easiest way to navigate is you can either touch or use this wheel, which I find is more intuitive and it's fairly quick. And these are all the apps I have installed. And for instance, let's try messages. I'll just go to one here. Here's my Amazon one. We'll see if it'll let me respond just so I can show you the the voice even though it's not going to go anywhere so yeah so here 
Obviously, I can use my canned messages that you can edit in your phone. I can use voice. I can send emojis or use the t keyboard itself. So let's try the voice. Of course, I'm not very close to it, but we'll try it. This is a test. There it is, and then you would just hit send. So it's fairly accurate, and I'm not close to it at all, and it gives you the option to send it as a text or audio. <clears throat> as I said, my favorite feature so far of this is probably um, being able to pay with my watch, which is cool. But just the face in Tizen OS so far is the smoothest experience I've used on a smartwatch, and I've used the Apple Watch, I've used um, Android Wear itself, and Pebble, and finally I've used Microsoft. So I've used everyone out there as far as the operating systems. And by far, this is the most intuitive and snappiest of all of them. And of course, this does also have built-in speakers. You can pair Bluetooth headphones to this, or you can use the internal speakers to actually play stuff. I'll give you a quick demo here. I don't know how it'll pick up, but we'll try. And you can use the dial to adjust the volume. And that's all the way up. So pretty decent. And like I said, call, uh, excuse me, call quality is fairly good too if you use this to take and receive calls on your wrist with the built-in microphone and speakers. So it's really loud actually for what it is. And then finally... Uh, looking at workouts. It does a pretty good job of tracking your steps and calories. However, I think as far as S Health itself is fairly limited and kind of garbage. Any watch you get, whether it be the Apple Watch, this, any band that uses the optical heart rate sensor, which is this kind that measures on your wrist, is always going to be inaccurate. I found I did a workout with this and I had a chest strap on at the same time just to compare. And this was just so far off that I would consider it unusable. Now, it's going to vary depending on your workout. I was doing an insanity type workout where I flex the wrist, do a lot of push-ups. So it's going to affect the accuracy. But if you're just walking or I would say running where you're not flexing your wrist a lot, it's going to be a lot more accurate. But for what I use, it's highly inaccurate. So I didn't buy it as a fitness band. And so I'm probably never going to use it as a fitness band unless they give me the ability to pair a... Bluetooth chest strap to it, which I'm hoping will come in an update. That is literally my one and only complaint with this watch is that I cannot pair a Bluetooth chest strap to it like I can do with the Apple Watch. So personally, I hated the Apple Watch. I hated it so much I didn't even review it. I gave it to my daughter um, just because I thought it's a crappy interface, crappy battery, crappy product, and I hate the way the Apple Watch looks. That's just my opinion, but one feature it did have was the ability to pair a chest strap to it. So, but with that, this is just kind of a first look and demo of this thing. Obviously, if you guys have questions on anything specific you want to see on this watch, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best uh, to facilitate that. But like I said, so far, this is my favorite smartwatch of any I've, I've owned. It's got tremendous battery life. It's got an awesome display and just the user interface with that dial it just makes sense to me. So like I said, my only complaint is that I cannot pair a chest strap to it because in my opinion, every single watch or fitness band that uses optical heart rate sensors sucks. So really I, they're inaccurate um, and no good for serious fitness. So if you're looking to buy this specifically as a fitness device, I recommend you get something you can pair a chest strap to as much as it pains me to say um, but if you're looking for the best smartwatch out there, this is currently the best smartwatch that you can buy, uh, bar none. Like I said, I've used every OS out there and tried most uh, smartwatches that are available on the market right now. And this, to me, blows them all away. So really enjoying it. And I'll try and do some more videos on this just as I get more into the features. And I did forget to mention GPS. Uh, that is one thing that is really good on this is the GPS. Uh, once you lock on the first time, it seems like it locks on fairly quickly and is really accurate if you want to use it for biking, walking, jogging, whatever. It works really well. So with that, 
So there you have it. That was my review and thoughts of the Samsung Gear S3 thus far. Lately, I've seen a lot of articles from different tech sites saying that the smartwatch is dead, that it was a failure. And obviously, the folks that are saying that have not tried this one. To me, this is what the smartwatches should be and is bar none the best smartwatch available on the market today. So um, if you have a Samsung phone or even a Google phone, you can use this. The rumor is that there's going to be a gear app for the iPhone in beta. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but right now, if you've got anything but an iPhone, you can work. You can use this watch right out of the box as long as you've got 4.4 KitKat and above. And that's coming from Samsung's own website. But obviously, if you have a Samsung phone, you're going to get the fullest functionality with it. But as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed to my channel and you want to see more reviews, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below, and I'll keep uploading. Thanks. Give it a thumbs up, and if you've not subscribed, please do so. Later.